This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Drive out of the car! With your host, Mark Martinez. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. And the English professor. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And hello, welcome to Can Crushers this week. I am your host, Mark Martinez. You can tell that we're really not happy this week. Well, why aren't we happy? Let me bring in my co-host. Welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Chad Parana and uh, the English professor, John Padalano. Guys, this week in wrestling sucked, but we do have some great news, but let's get the suckiness out of the way. How are you? Uh, you're in a bad mood. I'm all right. I'm in a bad mood. I'm about halfway between both of you. This, this just killing, killing what I fondly remember is my childhood with this bull, all this bullshit going on. So I, we got shit in one hand and we got Shinola in the other. So I don't know where we start. And, and you know, I, I tried to let it go last week and not let it go. But let's talk about what COVID's doing to wrestling. Uh, we got more cases in the WWE that are that are happening just got note that Vince wants to go live by the middle or end of July uh, bringing crowds back in in Florida that have massively the numbers have been going guys I don't care what you eat you two either I'm really in a bad sour mood tonight um I don't care what you're saying, if they're antibody testing or antibody testing or whatever. The numbers are growing. Like, Florida had 90 million more cases today. It's unbelievable. Stay the fuck home and wear a mask. That's it. I'm, I'm done. Well said. No argument for me. Um, you know, you had posted that story, Mark, on our Facebook page about... Um, COVID and what's going on with WWE and you, you pose the question to anyone willing to answer should they have taken a break and you got a handful of answers and they all kind of said yes and I'm torn because look what a break did to the NWA which is different obviously than WWE but maybe there should have been a time where they kind of get their heads together and say hey where have we been going wrong what can we do to spruce up some stories kind of jazz this thing up a little bit because it, it's been kind of garbage. Um, instead, they just keep churning out shows week after week and not any good. They're not all terrible. I mean, we talked about, like, the women's angle last week with the Iconics and, and the women's tag team champions and Charlotte and... And we'll get Nia. to that. And we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was all good stuff, but, like, for the most part, it, it hasn't been memorable, to say the least. Chad? Yeah, uh, I, I think the, the break would have been the, the better thing to do. But um, like I commented on the, uh, I think on the same one that John's talking about question was, Vince doesn't want and will not admit defeat to anything. Absolutely anything. The grass grew too, too quick for him. You know, whatever. If Vince would be the smart one and say, okay, we're scaling this shit back. We're not going to do this. We're not going to put these people in. We're going to broadcast stuff. Smart thing to do. Bad part about that is he has to produce something new for those shows every week. If he doesn't, then he is in violation of the contract of his contracts with them. Unless the state absolutely says Vince will throw your ass in jail. If you look at Titan towers. Well, 
I when we get to SmackDown, I want to I want to come back to that what you just said happened to produce new stuff. Okay, I, we'll come back to that when we do get to SmackDown. You're looking at Renee Young now has the COVID. Uh, Kayla Braxton having it the second time. Um, it's rough. Now Renee Young has to be quarantined from her husband, who could be giving it to AEW. Um, this is unbelievable what's going on with this, and it, it all could have been curved if we've taken a break. I, I really just, I want to continue to say take a break. Will we take a break? No, we'll find something to do. Um, but it, it just bothers me. This week has bothered me with the amount of COVID numbers that have been out there, and now we're back into, we're in the green up here, but we're wearing masks again, and it's just... The second wave's on its way, and John, your wife has underlining health issues. Chad, you're uh, an underlining health issue itself. So, uh, it's just, (sighs) it's time that we wake up a little bit. I I think we were six feet tall or ten feet tall and bulletproof the first time that we didn't get sick or something. Um, Hello, it's knocking at the door again. So, with AEW's been pretty much a hot show it's been fun to watch this week was okay but do you think it should have just shut down like nwa did or do you think maybe now is an opportunity to kind of hit the brakes a little bit i I think aew is more in a issue if they don't as chad would say produce stuff they would probably lose your their their contract or whatever real quick and chad might have froze no. Yeah, okay. I think they would lose their contract uh, faster than WWE would. Yeah, I I mean they they would obviously you know they're they're not tied in as much, but where it's going to hurt WWE is not with USA. I I think that I don't ever think they'll be off of USA unless they ever actually burn the flag on TV or murder somebody or something. I think that's the only way they ever lose the USA contract. The Fox contract, however, they're not going to care. Hey, it's a COVID. You're just like everybody else. You can produce something. You got to make it work. So there goes, there goes their ratings. They don't meet a certain rating quota. They lose the, the contract and what does SmackDown do? It either goes on the WWE network or it goes to USA. UPN. Back to UPN. Yeah. Or, about UPN. Yeah, or go to, you know, how many different channels or places was Impact on? Right? A, a million. Uh, when you look at how close these, these wrestlers are uh, in terms of proximity, it, it's dangerous. It is dangerous. You know, they're, they're trying to play baseball, which, Mark, you and I love baseball. It's probably the top of our list. I wish they'd take a year off. I do, too. I wish they'd take especially, a year off because... Especially now with the schedule that they have thrown out yeah, there. Ugh. The schedule sucks. The new rules absolutely suck a schlong. But more than that, you, well, God, with this guy on second base to start after inning, right, no. whatever, okay. But you can't high-five, you can't fist bump, you can't slap somebody in the ass, you can't pat them on the back. You're no chewing, no spitting sunflower seeds. Come on! You can't, you can't lick your fingers. And I get it, then just don't play. Just don't play. So my point is, baseball is the least contact of any sport or, or, or entertainment actors have more contact than baseball players do. What's the NFL going to do? What's pro wrestling going to do? You want to talk about close proximity? Everybody, it's creeping in. It's creeping in, and they may want to consider taking a break. It's not essential. Come on, guys. It's not essential. It Unless you make a contribution to a Florida governor's campaign. Then that son of a bitch can be anything you want it. Or can crushers. You want to make a contribution to us? Send it our way. We'll take it. 
We like seltzers. We like schnitzer whiskey and Chad. I don't know what the hell are you drinking? Apple cider today? Uh, no, I'm actually drinking Gatorade. Good boy. You're still trying to get better. Um, COVID, COVID's bad. On the other side, the Shinoa side of what's going on in wrestling, man, this is why I really kind of stepped away from social media. I would just schedule things to be posted. I really didn't look at a lot. I wasn't on Twitter as much because you can't turn the Twitter on without hearing about the Speak Out movement, and I support every one of them. I do. But it, it's breaking my heart for pro wrestling, for the victims, for the organizations. I mean, Chikara's done. Not that I was a fan of Joey Ryan's wrestling, but his is I mean, organizations are crumbling now because guys and gals can't de- keep their dicks or JJs alone, more or less. That's, that's it. That's it. Remember, uh, you know, a while ago on a podcast, we were talking about Dark Side of the Ring, and I I believe it was the the one of the UWF and Herb Abrams where you said, this is a Dark Side of the Ring issue. This is a, a Dark Side of Pro Wrestling issue. This crap going on now, and just like Mark, I absolutely support these people coming out and everything. This is showing practically the darkest side of pro wrestling as a whole that there can be. You're talking, to, you know, tit for tat, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, other body parts, you know, favors, everything like that. This is, this is killing. This is doing more damage to pro wrestling than Vince McMahon and his comic book bullshit. I'll drink to that. Um, yeah. So, I've got some bad news. Thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have some, some thoughts on this. Last week or the, or the week before we were talking about this, I mentioned, I'm, I'm pretty sure I mentioned on here, Wendy Richter... Um, being in the locker room at Madison Square Garden, I think, and Andre the Giant coming to her. Because back then, you know, there were probably 20, 30 guys in the dressing room and then probably Mula and Wendy in the other dressing room. Or, or Wendy had her own dressing room or whatever. But Andre came by with a bottle of wine or a bottle of champagne and knocked on her door. And she opened the door and Andre the Giant was completely naked. And so Wendy Richter rolled her eyes and, and laughed and said, oh, okay, Andre, ha, ha, ha. And she, she tells this story. Might have been on Dark Side of the Ring. I don't know. But she has every right to be okay with that and laugh about that. Now, here's an image. Andre the Giant walked from one locker room to the next completely naked, and nobody said anything. Oh, God. Uh, Are you going to say anything to him? That's what I'm saying. Are you going to say anything to him? Right. (laughs) So while Wendy Richter laughed about it, had she felt differently, could she have done anything about it? Could she have said, hey, look, this has to stop? Absolutely not. Chad's shaking his head. No, you're absolutely right, Chad. That's Andre the Giant. So if they got away with that, what else were these guys doing that women had to tolerate? You know? Um, and, and I'm not trying to be a knight in shining armor or wear a white hat or anything. And guys, I think we're being honest. We... Uh, tend to objectify some of the female athletes on this show. Certainly I do. I'll put my hand up right oh. now. And, um, this guy. The, the sassy Southern Belle. I love her. Lacey Evans, right? She's a Marine. She owned a business. She's a mom, a wife, a professional wrestler. So that, that level of success and confidence is sexy, and, and she's a great-looking woman. And Allison Kay is another example. I'm a happily married man, but I think I could say that if I were Michael Corleone, my wife Cheryl is Kay, but Allison Kay is Apollonia in the hills of Sicily. Like, I saw her, and something just happened. It clicked. We clicked. Anyway, she had a match of the year. 
candidate against Thunder Rosa. But I always talk about how beautiful she is. I always bring that up. You can go on social media to like uh, Channing Decker's page. And there are a lot of thirsty girls commenting on his stuff. He's a gorgeous man. I would say he is a His hair is beautiful. So I'm not trying to excuse... Your hair is beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate it. I did my hair today. By no means am I excusing my behavior or our behavior oh, no. or, or objectifying women. But Sammy Guevara saying that he wants to effing rape... Sasha. Sasha Banks. And I know it was four years ago. But guys, that means something. Words are important. Words are important. So Sammy needs to pay the price. And when he comes back, because I think he will be forgiven. And he should be. He should be. He needs to think about what that word means. Um, I don't think he could have gotten away with, I want to bang her. I want to plow her. None of that. Could he have gotten away with, man, she's hot. Man, she's gorgeous. Yes. Is it objectifying? Yes. But rape is rape is a crime. I mean, he, he's on record saying he wants to commit assault against this woman. You have to be better than that. You, you, you have to be smarter than that. One other quick thing. I think he will be forgiven. There are, I guess, certain lines that he hasn't crossed to our knowledge he hasn't hurt anybody he said something really stupid he needs to get that in check fortunately he didn't hurt anybody um but i, I think i think he'll move on from this and i hope he's he's better for it i don't i don't know um john or mark if either of you had seen uh his statement before he kind of went dark on Twitter and everything I did um, about, about it after this happened. I, I have a lot of respect for, I mean, I, I joke he, he gets on my fucking nerves on the show and everything, but that's his job. But him sitting there and talking about this, he offered no excuses. He was like, this was stupid. I was stupid. I was young and stupid, but I still said it. And he, I don't want to say what you said, but he's kind of like, there's one thing thinking, oh my God, she's hot. And I wouldn't mind having a chance with her. I'm, I want to fucking rape. There's a, there's a humongous difference between that. And he, he, readily admitted he said i deserve what i get i'm lucky that i didn't get more when i come back you're gonna see a different person and he didn't throw the fake tears out there like these a lot of these people you know apologize and oh and i've ruined this and i've ruined that he stood there getting visibly shake or i'm sorry sat there getting visibly shaken and you could see the honesty in him that he's like, I fucked up, okay, plain and simple. And then you get these guys that are apologizing for stuff that they did that it's like they don't care. They, they, the only reason they care is because they got caught. Yeah. Right there, Chad, is what it is. They got caught. Uh, I do like, we're going to wrap this up, I do like that Sammy actually got the chance to talk to Sasha. They both pretty much said it on their social media. Sasha accepted the apology. Uh, I'm going to work through some stuff. I, I think it's something that Sasha doesn't just wipe off her shoulders. You know, in time, you know, if they both cross paths, will they uh, high five or, you know, horrible because you said slap asses earlier so now it's in my head will they slap asses probably not you know um and sasha has every right to that sasha has every right to say man i'm gonna be the headliner on a card and maybe 20 years when you know she's not with wwe and she's doing some independent stuff or whatever she'll be the headliner on an indie show uh sammy Guevara may not but he could still be there uh, so I should be like, yeah, I don't want him here, you know, and I, 
I, I, I would not blame her at all. He did yeah. the right thing. He did do the he right thing. The, reaching out is a hard thing to do. Reaching out to the person you've hurt, whether physically or not, reaching out to that person is a hard thing to do. But he did the right thing. But to your point, Mark, it'll be hard to trust him moving forward if, you know, you're a woman in the locker room, you know? Yeah. Not just Sasha Banks. No, I uh, uh, you Sasha, because, but you're right. You're completely right. right. You're completely right. All right. Um, you know the best way to bring this back around, guys? To uh, get back on the happy side and take our break and talk about wrestling after this? Um, what do we like about Collar and Elbow? Let's, let's bring it back up. Let's bring our vibes back up. I have had two seltzers during that, so I'm better that, uh, than 20 minutes ago, at least. So let's talk about collar and elbow. I I love my collar and elbow shirts. I said before they're comfortable, and I kind of wear them to the gym and and well, I feel like badass. Hold on. Speaking of that, yeah. we're, we have plenty of time to talk about anything and nothing this week because I dropped the ball that we didn't do anything extra, and it's okay. You got a little bit of a workout in today, huh? I did about three hours. Yeah, oh, big workout. Yeah, and not for nothing. Uh, kicking a lot of ass. Chad, I am. <laughs> Jimmy Nuts is listening. I, I'm, I'm kicking a lot of ass. I'm, I'm gaining confidence every day. So that's what John did on his Saturday. Chad, what did you do on your Saturday? Because mine is eventful, let me tell you. Uh, not... Honestly, doing a whole hell of a lot. Some clothes and watching Blue Bloods. That's about it. I am enamored by this video game that came out two years ago. And, Chad, you'll be proud of me. You'll be proud of me. You'll be proud of me. It came out about two years ago. Uh, last week, my son, his Xbox Live or whatever came up. And, oh, my God, we didn't have a card so the world was going to come to an end. So I said, this, listen, I don't want to go to town either. Not that town's far away, but let's just put my credit card on it. Oh, my God, there's this new thing that you can get, and you can download games for free. Cool, I'll, I'll pay the extra five bucks, da 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 So I was looking at some games, and there was a Bear Hunter game coming out, and I'm like, oh, this would be really cool. I'm going to go downstairs on the PlayStation because, folks, we have every console. I'm the PlayStation guy. My wife is the Switch girl. Ethan is computer and Xbox. Um, and if Chad would make a, a video game system, the dog would probably buy it. Who the hell knows? So I go downstairs. It's not available on PlayStation. So I'm hell-bent for the last week and a half to find this hunting game. Yes, Chad, it's a hunting game. Uh, I don't want to play it in my, my son's sweat box of a room because he doesn't believe in airflow. He just... He's 13 and likes basking in his own sweat. Ah, so what do I do? So I just, I look it up on, and there's an old one, 2019, the beginning of 2019. That's why I said about two years, 2018, whatever. It's, I don't even remember what the hell it's called. Um, but I've watched people hunt today on YouTube. They posted their videos of these video games on YouTube in for five Plus hours today because it rained, so I couldn't cut my grass. I watched people hunt video game, and it's the game's coming to my house. I, I, I've already I've already bought it. Um, I'm off Friday because it's our Fourth of July. Uh, the wife has to work, so my goal is to go hunting Friday. This could lead into something else. This is going to be the first time I've ever hunted in my life in my good you know you you sound like one of those guys i'm hearing stories about in that autonomous zone in seattle that plays call of duty online and think he's going to do the same shit out in the real world i'm going to be able to take uh, if you want to go hunting i'm going to take you out hunting after playing this game and film this shit just for, for the hilarity of the whole thing. I'm telling you, by real hunting season, I'm going to be able to skin a bear with my old hands. Not even a cat. I'm going to go balls to the wall in. 
All right, nonetheless, back to Colin and Elbow. They got great Habs, hoodies, tees. Alistair, how do you like that reference? Habs, hoodies, tees. Uh, all their stuff is amazingly comfortable. The designs are awesome. Like I said last week, I, I, I got word, a little, a little news coming on its way. And when you check out, use Can Crushers, all one word, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers, and you'll get... 10% off your order. All right, we'll come back with some good news. And trust me, I will never go hunting with you, Chad, because your first bullet is going to be to my head. I know that. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the East End villain, Josh Ashcraft, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to Can Crushers. Chad and I argued during the whole break. Chad, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? You are accusing me that I'm going to put my first bullet in the back of your head. I said I was going to film this for humorous purposes. I want to see you try to load, try to load a gun. If it's the R2 button, I'm good. I, I mean, you're probably going to be the person that's going to try to pound the bullet down the damn barrel. Backwards, right? Because the, the bullet's got to come out, so you got to put it in backwards. Well, I was trying to give you credit that you would know that much. Okay. Guys, we did have some pretty awesome news this week. As I hope you listen to this Wednesday's Spotlight as we talk to John and Kevin of the Comic Book Encyclopedia of Pro Wrestling, and we are featured in it, and it's pretty awesome news. It's an incredible book. Um, Mark, you shared a little bit of it with me. Um, I guess you, you, they sent you a digital copy. I don't want to get anybody in trouble here, right? They sent you... They, they, they know that that's coming. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. All I did was brief over the very first story, which is about Bruno San Martino. And guys, it, it was emotional. It really was. When I I heard it was going to be an encyclopedia and a comic book and about wrestling, I really wasn't sure what to expect. And then I kind of thought that it would be something hokey. And Mark, you, you talked to the guys about this. So many times comic books come up and... and they kind of go away. So you buy the first few issues and then you never see it again. Um, I bring that up because some of those comic books, they didn't grasp you as much as this book does. There wasn't the emotional connection as much as there is in this book. And guys, I'm telling you, if you're able to pick up a copy, there's an emotional connection to these stories. What it is, is... The wrestler's story told in comic book form. So the art's amazing. The storytelling's amazing. You see Bruno surrounded by Nazis. You see him going to school in Pittsburgh and getting his ass whipped by these assholes who pick on him because he doesn't speak English. And then you see him lifting weights. And it, it takes you on a journey. It's really incredibly well done. It's such good work. It's a comic book. And it's about wrestling, and it's an encyclopedia, and it, it's brilliantly done. It really is, guys. And that is published by Squared Circle Comics. You can get that. Well, right now you can pre-order it because it's at the publisher, the printer right now, at WrestlingComics.com. Pre-order it now. It's available along with the rest of their comics that's out there. You know, you have the single ones of Hacksaw and the single ones. Uh, you just go there. It's awesome. 
Chad, I didn't tell you this. Chad, I didn't tell you this either. And this is uh, kind of breaking news. I said after the show with those guys, we hung around a little bit longer and just talked, uh, talk shop, talk some wrestling, talked uh, drinks. But it was pretty much about talking shop. Uh, Can Crushers will now be featured in every squared circle, squared circle comic from here on out. I I don't know about you, but I resent being told on the air and finding out like when everybody else finds out, this is just something Chad and I should have known earlier. Good. I'm glad you're pissing. I'm stuff. glad you're pissing now, like I am. Good. No, no, that's exciting news. That's really exciting news. Um, expand. How will we be featured? Do you have any idea? Oh, uh, we're gonna be part of the ringside crew, or in in a blip of each comic. Uh, you know, once or twice in in like the next one coming out. If you listen to the podcast, is gonna probably be Gangrel or the Killer Bees. Um, depending on order. I, I really, I don't remember because I didn't write it down. I wrote it down, but then I get rid of notes after every show because that's the way I, war, I roll. Um, so whatever one's coming up next, we're going to be in drawn in as, you know, a part of a ring sign attendant, either holding the sign or doing this or doing that or something. Plus we're the ringside commentators. We are their, their boys. So when they want to make an announcement, John and Kevin are going to come to the show and say, hey, let's talk about the next couple of books that we have coming out. And I said, fair game. So for those that don't know, Mark and I, are, are, a, a comic book drawing of us appears like sort of in the credits at the very end um, as sponsors, I guess. What Mark is saying is, is like, we're going to be like a Where's Waldo. Is that right, Mark? So More or less. look for Mark in this issue. Oh, he's that fan. And look for the English professor, oh, he's the ring announcer, whatever, right? Is that the idea? Right, and I'm working everything into it, yeah. So That's exciting. I'm, I'm Can Crushers as a that. whole is part of this. Right. Not just you and That's me, Can Crushers as a whole is part of this. And one, one episode, one episode, one comic, I might not be in it, but it might be Chad biting Gangrel's head off or, you know, whatever. He's me, Chad Osborne. I don't know who the hell he is, but can't crazy. Hey, have, have me Jim Cornette. I can't have. Rat. All of a sudden you're making demands. I, I am just coding their coattails. Well, I mean, maybe if we would have known ahead of time, I would have been thinking out more. Now I'm just like, oh, this would be cool. Yeah. Not thinking, oh, you know, well. Now, now you want to pick your spot. Now you want to pick your spot. Hey, I got to negotiate my contract, too. John has his. John's pissy. I'm allowed to be pissy. Everybody's pissy this week. So let's continue to be pissy, but let's be happy because uh, – my wife even shared that announcement. That's pretty huge. When my wife shares an announcement like that, she must uh, think she's going to be getting a new Rolls Royce or something. I don't. I don't know. This is exciting oh, stuff. She's not thinking she is. She's knows she is. Right. Uh, and and I guess put up to Kelly helping me out earlier this week, putting in a good word with somebody, allowed me to get. Uh, Topper for the back of my truck, an eleven hundred dollar topper for seventy five bucks. That's my, much much appreciated. That's my wow. second. That's my second wife, by the way. That's Sabrina. We we give shout outs to her every once in a while too. So Mark, you you've seen my my toys and my treasure chest of comic books, and you know what a DC nerd I am. I'm stoked, man. I've dreamed. I have fantasized about being some guy in a Batman comic book. I brought that up to them. Have you listened to the, I I I brought that up to them that you're the, I didn't, I'm not as comic booky as you. I would grab the solo, you know, CM Punk's on my mind right now, but I would grab the solo CM Punk or the solo ultimate warrior one, this, that, and the other. You waited at the comic book store for Green Lantern 101 to come out, and then Green Lantern 102, and then 
uh, whoever, stupid people I don't even know of, and I don't mean it mean towards comic book people, but you would just <laughs> wait there for them. Like, we rated, waited for wrestling tickets at Unimart. That was you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way we are about wrestling, I used to be about about DC Comics, too. I really was. But we're not drawn by DC people. We're drawn by Marvel. No, it's all right, though. We're drawn by Marvel people. So I love Marvel. This is amazing. I I saw that picture of us, and I, I couldn't believe it. Honest to God. What's your name? Uh, Amanda Great. Uh, Rachel's something like that. Yeah, yeah. She did a great job. She's an incredible artist. And John and Kevin are. John, you wrote that up real quick. Chad, we'll let you talk in a minute. Um, they are doppelgangers of us. They really are. They, they, yeah. they like old school stuff. They like NWA. They are uh, two great guys. I can't wait to have them back on to tell us. I'm excited for the Bushwhacker one now. Now that I hear everything John's doing with the Bushwhackers. Damn, I'm excited. I hope I'm getting licked by Luke or something. That would be awesome. That would be incredible, yeah. Fun stuff, man. All right, let's uh, transition into why we actually do this God-blessed podcast, and let's talk some wrestling. And before we get to what happened this week in AEW and WWE, I I have to ask the question, guys. Is NWA done? Very quickly, let, let me ask you, what was the idea behind it? Was it COVID? I mean, is that why Billy Corgan and whoever else decided to shut down? They didn't want to work through this like AEW and WWE have? I would think, I mean, this is going to sound stupid because wrestlers for AEW and WWE come from all over. But NWA, so closer proximity, I, I don't, this is my stupid thoughts that... The the production crew is pretty much on top of the ring, and everybody is legit from everywhere. You have, you know, Royce Isaacs in California. You have Thunder Rosa in Texas. And I think they stopped because they saw that the state borders were closing, and Billy wanted to do the right thing ahead of time. They, they really did, and they, they know that they're – lower, and I don't mean it mean lower on the totem pole in wrestling, younger on the totem pole in wrestling. So they were like, whew, let's take a break. I'm speaking like in the last two weeks, you've seen two people cut. Your first two TV champions see a bye. So now there's no TV champion. Thunder Rosa, which we love, has gone off and started her own promotion now in Texas where everything, president, GM, camera workers, da 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 towel girl, everything is run by women. It's not a rise that Kevin Harvey ran that, you know, was running rise, and there was this, that, and the other. It was a mixture. Thunder started everything run by women. Boom. Kind of to do the speak out, saying, this we can do by ourselves, women, and she is getting a ton of support already. So now what about the NWA World Women's Championship? What becomes of that? That's what I'm saying. This is yeah. why I'm throwing it out. What Lagana is gone. We've, we've talked about what Lagana did last right. week. So uh, you guys banter. I just well, have to go get another drink. Very, very quickly, Mark, when, when you say it's younger and newer, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. Because NWA goes back to 195 with Frank Gotch the, and the whoever. New Austin. rendition of it. The new rendition of it, dude. I just, I just wanted to yell 195 in your ear. I just wanted to yell at Mark, which is a good thing. <laughs> I don't think that uh, – I don't think it's going to kill NWA just for the pure and simple reason <clears throat> this is something that – Billy Corrigan has, owns the rights to. Um, it's it's not a huge, huge thing. Anything that they've been doing has been on on a smaller scale. Um, Quality wise, it's better. I feel a lot better than anything else. But I don't. I just don't think it's going to hurt them because they don't have. 
the high-priced people. They don't have the huge contracts and stuff. Um, I still think if the wrestling comes back around, that the NWA is going to end up doing something combining with Ring of Honor and, and pulling their resources. I, I still have that feeling. Yeah, and I, I the, these, these are my fingers these. crossed. These are my fingers crossed because I'm on the same ship with you. I'm I'm pulling tugboat with me. Yes, come on. Yeah, uh, they're going to be behind the eight ball. I, I really think they are. Um, they're going to have some catching up to do, and I think uh, th- their credibility. They're not doing anything wrong. They're not doing anything wrong, but their credibility as a wrestling promotion is going to take a hit. Um, Nick Aldis says he's the real world's champion and the 10 pounds of gold is sweet Charlotte. Um, you know, WWE championships really don't mean all that much anymore. So there was an opportunity for the NWA championship, maybe not to come to the forefront. I, I think in my opinion, AEW has that, but it's lost its place now, whether that was a number two or a number three, it's lost its place because it, it hasn't been. Um, in the public eye, like it was before. I I agree. I I agree. Go ahead, Chad. I'm just gonna say, you know, he, he was. I don't want to say stretching it before because his matches, no matter who he went against, whether it was James Storm, Cody, um, whoever he went against, he always put on good stuff, and they were just starting to really get their you know the wheels really going with them i think that where they're going to benefit if they come out of this and they combine with an roh or something is roh has the exposure to where you can get him back out there you can get him against quality uh quality opponents um and i think it it'll be more beneficial for both of them to have it um because look at who he could defend against the talent that's in ring of honor that's just sitting right now well i'll i'll step back on what i've asked you and say i was completely throwing you guys a bone i think legitimately nwa does the whole reset except for all this except for all this because he's kept his name out there nothing against eli drake and james storm they haven't really done anything great with the tag team titles uh rosa if she moves on because she's got her own federation or she's going to work with nwa i think that does a lot because now it opens up more women for the nwa to drag over as well um there's a woman i really want to talk about here in a minute that also could play a part in this as well. But you have these other organizations, like I said in the first segment, um, they're indies, but indie wrestlers have huge followings, uh, right? I mean, we all love people from IWC, from OVW, this, that, and the other. Um, Chikara's got a huge following. Uh, ball wrestling had a huge following. It's kind of different wrestling, but if they would just own some of their talent, you know, those are the two big ones, and there's others that are going to continue, and I hate to say it because of the COVID fold and because of Speak Out fold, but there's wrestlers out that they're now free for the picking. You have um, several WWE people that have not been picked back up. More to come is what I hear is now WWE is thinking about scrapping WWE UK. I just posted that less than 24 hours ago. So there's going to be names out there. Paige's family um, is stepping away from wrestling. And, guys, Tessa Blanchard was just fired from Impact and stripped of her title. So I'm just, I'm looking at women-wise. Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, with Paige's thing, remember, that's her mom. They're not getting rid of the promotion and that that they run. That's her mom 
because her mom's fallen in with these accusations, things and that. Right, but so I, they're not. I I say in the long run, you're going to see the whole family step away because the mom, not, nothing against the others, but the, the mom has been the flag bearer of that now for the last three years. Right. Right. And look at, look at Tessa. Um, man, let, let's honestly discuss it outside of, okay, she got fired or she didn't, the reports are, she didn't do interviews and have them sent up there and they had to, rework their programming and blah, blah, blah. So it's a, you know, violation stuff. They're letting it go, whatever. Okay. A, that totally way in degrades everything with that title. We talked about it before with having a female, having that title, beating the shit out of the guys, winning the match. So that whole thing is scrapped. But where is she, where could she honestly Land. W, WWE? No way. No. No, no way. Um, AW? Well, there's a curious factor because Arn and Tully are there. Um, does she do the in, independency? With business down, she's not going to get it, get the money. Like she would before. I don't think she fits into WWE. So no, she's not. She's, got she's had tryouts there, and they just don't like her attitude. Her attitude. Yeah, she's been a, a conga girl or a party girl or whatever. Right. Um, it seems if all of this is true, she's unfortunately sabotaging herself, and I don't get it. I, I wish she would get it together before it's too late, because you, you know. It's wrestling, so I don't know that you can ever permanently burn a bridge, but, man, it seems like she's trying. She's way too talented. I hope she kind of gets her act together, but all stories kind of point to what you just said, Mark, is that she's got a pretty lousy attitude. Um, well, go ahead. John, I, I'm sorry. I just want to throw something in there about where you're talking, Tessa, with WWE. A lot of the stuff, yeah, she had her tryouts, and they can – they can piggyback on what everybody else is saying about attitude and stuff like that. But Tully Blanchard, her dad, look what those son of a bitches did to him years ago. They screwed his career coming back over a pot test that they just hadn't reported, but, when Vince sent him and Arn home, you know, we got nothing for you. Just sit home till your contract's out. A week before or a couple of days before they're to sign a $750,000 a year contract with WCW. Oh, by the way, you're suspended for the rest of your contract because you failed the drug, path, drug test four months ago. I think a lot of her shit and problems with WWE could honestly be Vince Holt's Vince holds grudges what? to an extent what? unless he can make something out of it. Unless he can make something out of it. He made something out of with the ultimate warrior, you know, reconciling him, reconciling with Brett. He's got absolutely nothing to gain by reconciling with the Tully Blanchard, with the Blanchard family and stuff like that. I in, Te in Tessa's attitude, oh, I don't mean to be rude, and I'm not saying it's excusable, but look, a, look at a lot of these assholes that are in there, in there now. Vince likes assholes. Look at Shawn Michaels. Look at his son-in-law. Um, Shawn Michaels cracked the WWE. Oh, Chad's gone, John. Sorry. <laughs> as I as I look at my display case uh, of action figures that are autographed and DVDs that are autographed, I look at the history of the Four Horsemen, which I have autographed by everybody on the cover, by the way. Um, and I mention that because, Chad, you, you said how Tully failed a drug test 
he talks about it on that DVD and he takes full responsibility. I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly, it was Coke. Um, pot is one thing. Coke is something else. Was it new Coke or old Coke? Which, which it was with the really silver lining, whichever one that was. Diet the Coke. Right, then. The diet, the uh, new diet yeah, Coke. Yeah. Okay. That's what it was then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but to your point, Chad, I don't know all, all the details as far as that goes, but the timing of it really did kind of suck, and it makes you wonder. I mean, nobody made him snort coke, but the timing of it all, because they 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 were troublemakers in so far as, look, this is what you promised us. Cut us a check or we're leaving. Well, I can't cut you a check. Okay, here's our notice, and. We've been over this, where, where Anderson then starts getting paid more. He got paid retroactively everything he was owed, and then some. And he said, it's just Vince's shitty way of saying, look at the money I could have made you if you'd have stayed. And our point was, just pay us what you said you were going to pay us from day one, and we wouldn't have had these problems. We wouldn't have even had this discussion. So it is pretty shitty on on his part and the timing of this drug test is questionable, I guess. But the other thing I want to add is I don't know what Tess's relationship with her father really is in, in discussions we've had with her. Um, she has said that she was mostly or, or partially at least raised by Magnum, Magnum TA, by her mother and by Magnum TA. So I'm not really sure what her, I hope it's a great relationship. I just don't know. But to Vince McMahon, I'm not sure that it matters. If that's your last name and he hates one of you, likely he hates both of you. But she's not doing herself any favors. If no. what's out there about her is true, she's not doing herself any favors. Vince probably hates all Martinez's because of me, without a doubt. Maybe, yeah. I would yeah. There's a lot of you guys. But, yeah. but I, mean, it, I mean, look at what the What does that mean? Look at that. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. <laughs> Pedro, Tino, Edgar, the list goes on and on. They're all my uncles. Sorry, go ahead. Let's get to AEW. Chad, finish up what you want to say, and then let's get to AEW. For the love of Christ. Uh, I'm just going to say, you know, I'm, I'm not excusing what she does or supposedly did and everything like that, Pat, but that's, that's wrestling. That's people protecting themselves i don't think she's much more than anybody else that's in that position and i think she's looked at more critically because she's a woman i think that's a big issue and we all know that the fence doesn't like people standing up, up to them let alone women so yeah you know you're probably right how many years of Shawn michaels uh, of I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. No, we're doing it this way. You know, you're probably right. You're probably right. Sorry, Mark. I mean, please. It's just the way I look at it. I love Tessa. She was nice. You know, everybody. I I just want to see I, when these cross work. I want to see proof. That's that's it. Yeah. I, agree. I don't want to see people that she is jumped over and done better than I, I just want to see proof on this shit. I don't want to see hearsay or I was standing outside the door when they went outside or whatever the hell. What, one other quick thing. We've met a couple of times, more than a couple. And the one time, Mark, and I told the story, Mark and I split up and went to get different autographs. And when I saw her, swear to you listeners she said your friend was just here and i'm thinking how the hell does she know that she look at my face look at my face it's unforgettable but no she remembered me and mark together from the other time she met us which is down by pat's sweet. house it's very nice down it's by very pat's nice house of her. exactly mark it's very nice of her to remember her fans aew this week now that we're going to talk about wrestling, finally, I am five in. And by the way, guys, this has been therapeutic tonight. Um, when I called you guys, this will probably go a normal longer than I said it was going to. Uh, I was thinking about it was going to be a shorter one, but I, I was salty. I was salty. I, uh, I needed wrestling talk. Uh, this does it. This really does it. 
I had a nice Glad talk. I had a nice talk with uh, Bearcat Keith Hot this week. By the way, uh, I want to give him uh, a shout out because a nice talk about uh, some emotional stuff. He's he, he's a uh, he's a wonderful wonderful human being, and hopefully hopefully I can get uh, him to unleash and uh, come on the show because. There probably wouldn't be a lot of wrestling talk, a lot of him helping me out talk. But AEW, it starts off with our boy Wardlow in a lumberjack match against Luchasaurus. And John said it, and I think Chad piggybacked it. It was a good AEW show. And good for me is a stretch. Um, I don't think it was a weak one. I don't think it was an eh. I'm saying it was a fair AEW show because uh, wrestling in in all this week stuck to me. But all right, let's talk about this match. I love Wardlow. I loved him. Uh, I loved it. Everything about this match. Yeah. Um. You know, speaking, we we were just talking about Shawn Michaels, and he has said when someone is a star in a certain territory, and AEW is not WWE, and I understand, but they get called up to a bigger promotion. And he, he was specifically speaking of Kerry Von Erich. The lights are too bright. The action's too fast. Whatever. Um, some of those guys get lost in the shuffle. Wardlow hasn't missed a beat. Wardlow was the star here in Pittsburgh. The few times we've seen him in the ring, he hasn't missed a beat, guys. We were saying that we don't see enough of what he can do. We've seen him in a few different matches. We saw him against Kobe, and he wrestled a certain style. And now we saw him in a big man match. This was a good big man match. I enjoyed the story of the Lumberjacks. Um, it just reminded me of old Lumberjack matches with a little bit of a new twist. These guys are going to be hard to throw back in the ring. So the wrestlers had a hard time throwing him back in. And then there was a story of, of course, the Lumberjacks get involved in their own brawl, and then these guys are throwing them around because they're big guys. It was a fun, big guy match. You make it a Lumberjack match, and it, it adds another element of fun. Overexposure. Exactly what they're not doing with Wardlow. They're bringing them along. Okay, if they had more stuff going on and the fans, I think he would have been a bit more involved in things if they had more shows and stuff like that and pay-per-views and all that. But I really think that they're not, what what's the term, hot-shotting them up to the front. Oh, holy shit, this guy's got a talent. Zoom, let's make him champion. They're not doing that and you know you brought up Kerry Von, Von Eric Kerry Von Eric was a huge humongous star in Texas he was you know he was God's right hand man in Texas outside of Texas wow. he wasn't that special and his issues when he got money made it even worse um, you know the drugs and everything that's why the hell he, he never defended the NWA title when he won it from Flair. They're just like, okay, you're going to win it. And three weeks later in Japan, you're going to lose it in a two or three falls match. Never made any appearances with it. Never did anything with it. I think he actually skipped dates. I think he was scheduled to, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think he actually skipped dates and they were yeah, like, I'm no, we can't have this. He was just a, he was a, a little fish thrown in, you know, to a, a big pond of frickin' piranhas or something. Oh, um, get your name back in there, yeah. Nice. Well done. Promotion. Um, but they're just not overexposing them. So, and that's the best thing that they're doing. So you're saying when I go to the church um, that I already went to today, but next week I should say in the name of the Father, the Son, and Carrie Von Eric, because... That would be his role when you do the, the Holy no, Spirit. Uh, no, I, not, in, not in Texas. Oh, uh, all right. Um, uh, quick, quick, 
Did you want to talk about this match, Mark? Go ahead. I did. I did already. It was great. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then I have a question for both of you. I ahead. say it was great. Good. Go uh, okay. Is that it? Yeah. It's great. That's it. All right. Um, one, one minute or less, guys. Assuming there, there was no COVID for a moment. Assuming we're back to normal. Do no house shows hurt a career like Wardlow? You're absolutely right, Chad. They're not overexposing him. But could a card at Ridgeway Area High School <laughs> featuring Wardlow be beneficial? An AEW card, whatever. No. House show. No. No, seriously. Like an opportunity where this guy gets to work because now the only time we're ever going to see him is in front of millions of people on live TV. And that's a lot of pressure. That's there, a lie. That's a lie. Avenue. That's a lie. Because right, he's, on, Mark, go ahead. he's on AE. Shut up, Chad. It's my show. It's on AEW Dark that he gets some matches too. We don't cover AEW Dark. He's had some right, matches right. on Dark as well in the same venue, in the same da 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 da. And I don't think it hurts anymore. I re- it's. Okay. You, you want to see his younger stuff? Watch IWCNetwork.com for nine ninety nine a month. Chad, I'm I'm going to disagree. I absolutely, positively with Mark. The AEW Dark is fine, but what house shows do is let let the promotion, let the people in that see how the fans are reacting to the wrestlers reacting to storylines that's what the purpose of how shows are try storylines start angles see how people react does it fall flat or does it go up i think that would absolutely a hundred percent benefit wardlow because you could put him in against more people at house shows you just posted a story today mark of um mr ginsburg where he talked about going to the different boroughs, and there was a card in Brooklyn where Johnny Rods, my boy, had like a 35-minute barn burner for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. I did. It was a great read, is what I said. I didn't say say anything about... No, but I'm saying that's an opportunity to see if Wardlow can go 35 minutes with someone in in a Brooklyn high school gym. Right. Right. I asked your answer. And I, I think that since he's been our local boy, I don't I don't need to see Wardlow at Ridgeway Area High School. That's my okay. that was my point of view. Okay. Do the millions and millions of other people do your homework? That's what we're here for. Listen to Can Crushers. Yeah. Okay. Salty. I told you guys at the beginning, I'm salty. Um she just destroys whoever the hell she went against and then beat the shit out of Penelope. Um, great match. Okay, yeah, good. Moving along, uh, the press conference was great. We'll pause here. Loved we're, it. We're not going to cover everything. We're going to glance over WWE because we want to bitch at you guys in the third segment. So, all right, uh, press conference, unbelievable. I loved it. I loved every second of it. Arn Anderson is still a master promo. He's not as loud as he used to be. He's a little older, a little slower moving, but he's very cerebral. Um, I I loved Cody in this. I loved all of it. It was like when Sting beat Luger and they had a press conference afterwards and they asked about Ric Flair. who was in the WWF at the time. There was a little shot at Flair. But uh, it, it it was very old school. PWI was there and... I thought the questions were a little eh, soft. I, I thought you could have asked something a little more pressing. Nevertheless, uh, this was a fun old school segment. Go ahead, Mark. It's your show. No, no. It's the game. It, it, it's, it, was, <laughs> it was better than any contract signing that we've seen in WWE in the last 30 years, bro. So go ahead, Chad. Yeah. No, I... I... I'm just giving you shit. It's old school showing something different, not a thing in the ring where you, you know, there, uh, there's a table and that, you know, they're going to be a brawl and everything like that. Something different. It looked good. I enjoyed it. 
Next match, Brody Lee and my boy Colt Cabana taking on Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela. Um, the main story is, I'm telling you, Colt's joining us. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I think the writing's on the wall. The match is okay. It was a little chaotic for my liking. Chad's got it to- had Nutella and Sunny Kiss in it. Um, I don't... I mean, are they going to start calling them the new Midnight Express or Midnight Rockers or something like that? Uh, I did, didn't care for it. SCU against FTR. This was a Donnie Brook. Uh, FTR gets the win, and then everybody and their brother. Any tag team that's ever been in AEW comes out. Uh, I thought it was going to set up for a tag team battle royal, or I don't know what the hell. But it sets up for an eight-man match at Fighter Fest, which is the next two weeks. Um, which then WWE copies and says, hey, we're going to have all of a sudden the Great American Bash the next two weeks. Ah, uh, WWE just coattails. Let's just ride those bitches. Nothing. Yeah, I thought um, that was the point, was that it was to showcase the tag teams they have after we just watched a really good tag team match. I didn't know FTR could be this good. Man, were they just not given a chance in WWE. The more I see them in AEW, and it's not even like there were a lot of better teams teams in WWE. You know, the Usos stand out and the New Day stands out, but other than that, um, these guys are really good. These guys, I know they say it on AEW, but I'll agree, they remind me of like Eaton and Lane. I've, I've liked them from the start. I liked them in NXT. They're an 80s wrestling tag team do things right they they look smooth they're not choppy they're not doing you know jazz hands or shit like that um they're they legitimately are the real deal they got shafted by wwe because vince doesn't like tag teams so when they talk to each other mark and i'm being totally serious i i got flashbacks of like Johnson and Atlas or Wyndham and Rotundo, when all they were doing was standing in the corner and like talking to each other. And you're thinking, are they going over a game plan or are they saying like, hey, remember this one spot, don't break your leg or whatever? Who knows? But it looked like a team. It looked like two guys going over their plan. They very much resemble an 80s tag team. You're absolutely right, Chad. I'll give you both uh, one shout-out for the rest of the show because I'll go over it quickly. Uh, Britt was sending great notes again to Tony and Big Swole came out. Santana took on Broken Hardy. Uh, A new Neo One comes out. Chad's already loving that. And then Orange Cassidy chats with uh, Jericho that sets up the match at Fighter Fest. So the second half wasn't... That's where I. That's where it became fair for me. That I was like, all right, great. Not that I mean nothing against Britt. Britt carried the second half, but the rest was just there for me. I was tired by then. Yeah. How fair much? Enough. How much do you guys think? I that, don't. I don't think at all. You don't know me right now. I don't think at all. Oh. Okay, let me say Sammy Guevara. Maybe that'll get your attention. How much do you think him being removed from programming and stuff affected this episode and will carry on down till he comes back? Heavily. I will answer that heavily. Because it was supposed to be Sammy Guevara against Matt Hardy. Uh, tell so many more stories. Sammy Guevara... Being the jackass that he is, and we're not praising him. Right now, Sammy Guevara is a loser for saying what he said. But he had a job to do in this, and he did it. Um, Him coming out with Jericho every time, singing as bad as I do at karaoke, that's his job. That's what he does. He gets the stupidness over. 
I'm just telling you, Guevara is a huge player in AEW. Have it wins or losses because they all matter. He's a huge player in AEW, and it's going to change the landscape a little bit for as long, and there was my air quotes to both of you, as long as he's out. Uh, I'll disagree. Uh, I don't dislike the guy. I thought he was very entertaining on the mic, in the ring. Um, There were five members in that group. It's probably not just because of the four horsemen, but, but five gets to be kind of a big faction. So it's probably one too many. I don't think they'll miss him as much as you're saying. I hesitate to use the word huge, that he was a huge factor. I think he could have had some better matches than maybe like Jericho filling in for him easily. But I don't think he was the guy that got mostly pinned, remember, in, in a lot of these matches. I don't think he was as big of a deal, maybe. As did it carry the storyline along, though? Whatever he was doing, did it carry that storyline? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they'll be fine without him. That's all. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I think he, as much as I dislike him, he's. He is an integral part of AEW and the storylines and everything. Whether he's getting his ass kicked or not, that's just the thing. You root for him to get his ass kicked. And that's his his job. His job as a total heel, don't see a lot. His job as a total heel is to do that, and that's what he did. I just think it's really through a monkey wrench into this week and kind of drop the quality of this week's show. I'm curious. I want to see what the next stuff, the next couple of shows, how it's affected without him being in there. I think he's, you can say Jericho's a huge player. Obviously he is. Dean Ambrose is a huge player. Obviously he is, but you don't get Jericho and Ambrose's style without guys like Guevara without the supporting cast. All right, guys, I'm going to give us five minutes. Five minutes on WWE. Is that going to be too long or too short? The time starts right now. Let's cover WWE in five minutes, and I'm going to hit the stop button in five minutes. Go. Wow. Sonya Deville article talking about Charlotte Flair getting more chances. That's the only thing I got good out of WWE this week. The Undertaker predictions that'll come back for another match. Ay, ay, ay. They really have nothing else. Both of their top champions. Um, I, I can't. I don't like either one of those guys. I, I don't think they can carry the promotion. Uh, which is why they keep going back to The Undertaker. I may have said this on here. Guys like Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, they were getting really close to tarnishing their legacies by the constant overexposure long after they should have been done. Block against Hogan, a lot of fun. Hogan and Flair with saggy boobs and pot bellies, bleeding buckets, terrible, terrible, terrible. Fortunately, fortunately, they both quit just shy of tarnishing their legacies to where we still remember the good stuff. Undertaker is dangerously close to having at least me remember him as a guy who hung around for too long. That match at WrestleMania was was recorded and they had all the right angles and the right spots and, and it was beautifully done. And on that note. Please, just be done. All right. For this week, since none of them covered that, uh, Championship Monday on Raw, you're going to get Drew against Ziggler. Nia takes out Charlotte. She's going to be out for an elective surgery for the next few weeks. The Viking Prophets uh, settled their whatever the hell they had going on. Uh, Asuka's going to be taking on Charlotte. At, not Charlotte, Sasha at Extreme Rules for her championship. I love that whole thing. 
because I'm a Sasha and Bailey fan, they're both going to have, and this is great, I really hope so, they're both going to have opposite titles and the tag titles. It's a great storyline. It's at least something that's going to make everything relevant again. Edge and Randy chat about having another match when Edge comes back. Uh, Tazawa defeated our truth for the 24 7 995 discounted Kmart title. Um, Nat's now with Lana. Good God, poor Nat has dropped to the bottom of the barrel. Uh, the Iconics lost, so who knows what the tag team champions are going to be like. Liv wants nothing to do with Ruby Riot. SmackDown, it was all about Taker. We're going to get a Braun versus Bray match in a swamp cinematically. This is going to be Bray's second cinematic match. Oh boy, I can't wait. Uh, that's it. And we did it with 40 seconds to spare. Nice. That's the WWE. That's- that's because you were long-winded. John and I were done in under a minute. And Sasha's going to be taking on Io Shirai during the Great American Bash. But when we come back, hopefully, I don't remember what we're going to talk about, but John's ready to go. Hey, everybody. This is the Imagine Wrestling Champion, Spencer Slade, and you're listening to the Can Crushers Podcast, the best professional wrestling podcast out there. And I've got Three words for ya. Fear the gear. Welcome back to Can Crushers. It is I, the English professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Mark is your host. We're joined by Chad, the guru. And uh, while we were on break, we were talking about what uh, we want to watch, maybe, for next week. Is that right? Yeah, but... I really want to take that part out of your contract of the English Welsh thing that you talk about. Whatever, I don't. Whatever. You don't know. Right. Uh, so, what are we thinking? What do we want to watch? I want to watch uh, something horrible. We we've been watching stuff that we've been pitter patting around. Even Chad's seventeen hour uh, Legends of this that so the God. other that we we had to watch. Everybody, including ourselves, getting into inducted into Hall of Fames. It took way too long. We were like, oh, it was a four, minus the bullshit. Chad's like, well, I didn't watch the bullshit. Well, you put us through the bullshit because we thought you wanted to talk. I want to watch something that we can just shit on and drink heavily. Not that I don't drink heavily every show, but really get into it and just rip it apart for being putrid. Well, anything that put WCW... You know, their last couple of pay-per-views or anything like that should qualify for it because uh, that wasn't worth toilet paper. We've talked a lot about Dustin and the blacktop bully in the back of the truck. Yeah, what was was that? What was that? Sold out in your what? I don't no. Shane in your face. What was that? It was the same night that Duggan fought Ming in a, a kung fu match. It wasn't Halloween Havoc. Uncensored. Uncensored. All right. That's what WCW we... Uncensored. And I'm almost positive it was 1995. All right. Well, that's what we're doing next week. Find it. Watch right. it. Please, I'm sure it's on the network, so don't call me next week begging All me right. to find it. I'll you, try to find it on my own. Do you know how to spell Uncensored? I'm pretty sure I do. Good. All right. That's what we're watching next week. So if you're going to watch it along with us and hear what we have to say about it, it's probably not going to be good because now it's all kind of coming back. Oh, wow. Duggan in a karate match. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) We also want to bitch about a couple other things. We're uh, going to throw some teasers out. Third segment, not going to be as long. Um, John... This was your spearhead, so go with it. The tournament, yeah. Um, We wrapped up the Revolutionary Force tournament. Um, The three of us put our heads together, and we were excited. We wanted another women's tournament. We had done the Stand By Your Man tournament, which really was just 
was more of a man's tournament than a woman's tournament because it was about how women stood by their men. Uh, Miss Elizabeth won that. We did a Queen of the Ring, which was just a straight up wrestling tournament between women, but we wanted to do something different. We and, wanted to have and Lita won that. You didn't mention that. Lita, Lita won, won that. Yeah. yeah, Lita won that. I'm sorry. We wanted to do something where we really emphasized the women that were revolutionary forces. And Mark and I love Mark like my brother, but we butted heads on this with who we wanted in there. Mark really wanted to recognize a lot of the current women um, across the different scenes. And very few people voted, ever. There were some matches that had a nice turnout. Mostly it was Fuckers. the Martinez against... Fuckers. Mo- mostly it was the Martinez's <laughs> against the Padalano. Sometimes, you know, it was, it was me and my wife against you guys. Sometimes it was me and Kelly against you and Cheryl. Sometimes it was boys against the girls. But matches ended in, in ties because... Mark and his wife and my wife and I were the only four, and, and, and Chad, you know, or whatever. We were the only ones who voted. The Lapinos um, voted like shit. Soup Geist voted like shit. And I haven't seen uh, Colin Maines' name on the goddamn website in a month. All right. Don't call people out. Oh, um, they're all family. So I just, I wonder, guys, did you not dig it? Like, what was going on? Please reach out to us. Because these tournaments have been a lot of fun, and you guys have reached out to us and said, when are you doing another tournament? Because we always enjoy these. And nobody, nobody turned out for these. Very, very few people. And it was a bummer every single day. In fact, this is the honest to God's truth. You want transparency, Mark? We didn't even do a final match. We just kind of ended it and picked a winner simply because there was a draw in a semifinal match, which means we'd have had to pick someone to throw into the final match. Just kind of dumb. Someone that hasn't been there the entire time now just gets thrown into the final. So we just made the one semifinal match the final match. You want real transparency? And then you said, do you want Cheryl to pick between China and Charlotte? And right. I, and, that was the draw. And I love you as a brother, as you said. But I was like, she's going to pick Charlotte. And it was after it was after the fact. And that. I didn't want Charlotte in the finals. That's why I didn't let Cheryl vote. That's exactly why I'm like, no way. No way because Cheryl's going to pick Charlotte. Or, I love you as a brother, and we twist things. Um, you'd say, oh, Cheryl said Charlotte. Because Charlotte's your your crush. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and even more transparency, I did say that. I did say that. I said, hey, look, Cheryl's voting for Charlotte. And she read what I said, and, and I'm not... Maybe I was projecting. Cheryl's like, I said Naya. I'm like, oh, shit. Oops. It's too late now. But to your point, Mark, it was after the fact. She should have voted when she had the opportunity. But I'm just curious, guys. What's done is done. Tell us why you didn't like it. Um, Be truthful. Were were some of the names too obscure? At cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Send us the emails. Let us know. We have another one in the hopper. We, we've talked about this, and it's fun. Do we want to mention it now, or do we want to see if they want another tournament? Tease it, because I want okay. to see. I want to see Chad's eyes at least. We're not going to give names, but at least tease okay. it to see Chad's eyes. That's a big eye. Wow, let's zoom in. <laughs> um, so we had a legacy tournament in the past where we talked about we, we featured second, third generation wrestlers. We want to do a tag team legacy tournament. So you can imagine, without digging too deeply, who would be in that. Not the Road Um, Warriors. Not the Road Warriors. Correct, because they're not really a legacy. They're they're not second-generation wrestlers, and they're not related. So this would be more like, just as an idea, Offensica, because they're brothers. Or the Mulkies. Because they're brothers or Windham and Rotundo because of uh, Mulligan. You know what I'm saying? And plus they're, you know. Chad's got to uh, say something. Wait, Ch- go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. What? No, I was just going to say, you, you got roll your eyes, whatever. But when you're talking about legacy and second generation and that, the, the first one that comes to mind is one of the most successful, if not the most successful tag team in wrestling history, the Rock and Roll Express. 
they're both second generation brothers uh brothers wrestled fathers wrestled huge in the mid south I, that, yeah, I like yeah. that yeah okay you know See? we really haven't cemented any names we just wanted to you know we, we we thought about it a little bit now we kind of put a feeler out there so let us know guys would you be interested in a tag team tournament that that revolves around families and is it is it because it, we've seen it across the board on all posts? And I'm not saying this meanly, meanly. That's not yeah, correctly. No, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, right. no, you're good. Meanly, because I know a lot of people are taking a step back from social media right now. Our our numbers um, on podcast listens are there. They're not extremely where they were but they're still there so people are listening they find us on spotify instagram uh, instagram uh itunes you know all the, all the outlets so they're still getting the notifications there but even like hey look at this this is really cool right now uh, it, it's not out there so i really think people social media right now is decimating to human life because yeah. oh and you guys we don't need to go into it but it is just a rough time on social media. Should we wait a little bit before we release this? Granted, we love these tournaments. I, I have a tournament over um, Blackberry Corona Seltzer against Mango Bud Light Seltzer. How much should Mark drink of each every week? I would do something stupid like that. But I understand if you're taking a step away from social media and finding us on the platforms of iTunes and Spotify iHeart and Buzzsprout, all those that you can get off of your phone, just boom, pop them in. That's cool. If you don't want to come over to our Facebook right now, let us know. Because this is actually the names that we could throw together between the three, uh, between the two minds of Chad and John, because shut up, I don't know shit about this. I just put the pictures up and copy and paste and this, that, and the other. But those two could put a goddamn good tournament together, and I could post it great. And it would be fun. And Mark, to your credit, I was we have discussed some teams. We some. have not ironed anything out. None. But Mark has had to reel me in because I love the hearts and I love the Von Erics, but I had David and Kevin, Kevin and Carrie, Carrie and Mike, Mike, and he's like, settle down. We don't need pick one. Pick your favorite one, and that's what we'll use. We don't need Every Samoan team, we we don't need every Von Eric team, right? Yeah. So we but yeah, let us know, guys. I, I think we ought to maybe give it a break for a little bit, but let us know if that's what you think is right. Nothing. Chad's got nothing. No, He's I, pissed. I, 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 no, no. I I like the idea. I I think maybe you know with the the lesser numbers and on social media and stuff. It'd be a good idea. Let's really think about this. Let's take take a break from it. But let's really you make a list. You make a list. You make a list. Let's argue our list. Let's come up with have Oprah. Settle down. Settle down. Oh, what? what? Oprah. You're getting a toy. Why'd you call him Oprah. Oh my God. <laughs> I like your idea, Chad. And you know, something that I'm going to throw out, I thought would be a good thing that we could do that would be playing, could be playing off of each other. What, what makes uh, an A plus wrestler? What makes a good wrestler? Top five things, you know, uh, talent, body, charisma, it factor, whatever. Give examples. Grade some people or something. Have like a uh, a round table of okay, who is who is the best in in charisma? Who's the best in interviews? Something like that. We need we need a round table. First of all, this is rectangular in the studio. You you know that. You both know that. So we need a round table. But to have a round table and I will always say this. I, we will not open this up to a round table until everybody's in studio. And when I mean everybody, I mean I, I want 
four or five of the Can Crusher Nations here. You know, uh, you two goddamn better well be. Uh, we could bring Soup in, we could bring Colin in, we could bring Junkyard Dick in. Uh, Paul can come back to talk about this. You know, we need we need all... I mean, let's... Uh, we're transparent tonight again. Um, Chet, you're, you're the oldest can crusher by several years. Then it goes John and me, and, you know, we, we could just roll down the line. Um... I want all generations of can crushers in here because Soup will say Adam Cole is the greatest everything. Um, you would say, no, I'm going to give it to Marty Skrull. I'm going to give it to, you know, we're, we're going to, I want to bump heads that this is the way that we're going to sit down and settle this. That's the round table I've been waiting for for about a long time. But nobody gets their shit together. And that's why we need to, figure this out plus yeah, make a two. list like plus the table exactly square what said, and then we'll have a round table when all this is over plus the table square so we can't have a round table. table yeah we'll have a square table. okay we'll have the circle square table nice i like it squared circle table or squared, squared circle table. Table. whatever we'll, we'll speaking of we'll, square we'll speaking of squared circle do you guys didn't know that you were in a comic book it's called, been all this. yeah, right? I'm yeah. just giving them yeah. more props. How much does that book go for? It? Good call. It, it's on wrestlingcomics.com. Right, uh, you don't know the price I, off I believe it's twenty nine ninety nine to pre-order it. That's not bad at all, guys, because it's an amazing book. Legit, there's ten comics in it, plus the extra stuff, plus the added bonus that were in it. And we are not getting anything for this. Again, I, I tell you guys all the time that we get kicked back from collar and elbow. Yeah, it, it sends us some money. I buy beer with it. That's about it. I don't give it, them guys anything unless they're here and then Chad drinks. Um, but we're not getting anything from WrestlingComics.com besides our pretty faces in the next comic books. Awesome. Any, um, I think that was it. Those are the things we want to discuss, right? What we want to watch for next week. Yep. Why nobody voted on our tournament, what our next tournament's going to be. And that's about it. Any final thoughts, guys? I, I better take this over because Mark is fading fast. I'm turning into Chris LaRusso. Yeah. Any final thoughts, anybody? Nothing. All right, you guys finish it out. I'm out of here. All right. Uh, remember, Chad, just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a trash can, not a trash cannot. It's garbage, beep, you son of a bitch. Beep, it's garbage. Beep, beep.